I think we are all set up. So our final Battlefield company for this block is Stradio. Presenting for Stradio, our CEO, is Jay Hyung Lee, and Vice President of Business Development, Leslie Grouthouse. Take it away, guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay Hyung Lee. I'm a co-founder and the CEO at Stradio. Today, we're happy to introduce you to LinkSquare, a low-cost portable spectroscopy that works with your smartphone for medication identification. You might think that getting a prescription drug is a simple process. Doctor writes the prescription, they send it to the pharmacy, and you go pick it up. But there are actually extra steps that you don't see behind the counter. A technician must fill up the pills to the bottle, and a uh, licensed pharmacy has to visually check whether they are all correct. This extra step makes lots of pain. It takes a lot of time for pharmacists and also for the patients. Between 40 million to 200 million, incorrect prescriptions are dispensed annually. And this results in extreme cost to the pharmacy and lots of pain to the patient, permanent harm or death. So this, this step is burdensome, but you cannot skip it. That's the key point. Today, we're introducing LinkSquare. LinkSquare will help pharmacy to improve the efficiency as well as to protect themselves and their patients. Anyone, including the technician, can use LinkSquare to verify whether the pills are correct or not. Let me show you the demo. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go inside the demo and show how it feels like when you use it. OK, hi, everyone. My name is Leslie, and I will be narrating you through our demo here. And if we could switch to the overhead, that would be great. OK, all right. So let's pretend that we're in a pharmacy, and let's pretend that Jay is not the CEO of Stradio, but instead a pharmacy technician. Jay needs to fill a prescription today, and it's a prescription for Viverin caffeine pills, which we'll pretend require a prescription for this demonstration. So Jay is going to select the pill that he thinks is correct, but he needs to be sure that it's right before it goes out to a patient. So he's going to use LinkSquare to help him. So he launches the app, and then he's going to connect the LinkSquare, uh, which is done through Wi-Fi. And in the app, he'll go and he'll select Viverin from the selection of drugs, because that's the one he wants to verify. So he will point the link square at the drug, and he'll press the scan button. And you'll see that the scanning is happening when the white lights circle around. And when scanning is complete, it'll give a flash. And we will be able to tell you that this is, in fact, not the pill that Jay wanted to dispense. And it's one that looks a lot like it, but he's lucky that he checked to be sure. So Jay thinks about it a little bit more, and he has a hunch that perhaps he accidentally grabbed the generic version of Viverin instead. So he's going to go back in the app, and he's going to select uh, Maximum Stay Awake. And he's going to test again to see if his hunch is correct. So he will point the link square again and press Scan. Uh, a light shines out of the bottom of link square to help with analysis. And then we'll see that, in fact, this was the generic version. And he had made a mistake. And it's a good thing that he did not give it to his patient. So we have one more pill, a special pill. We're in Las Vegas, the land of fun. So we have here a Viagra that we will have Jay confirm is the correct one. Yeah, uh, you don't want anything wrong with your Viagra. It's very important to get the right one. And so we will have Jay go ahead and perform the scan. And we will make sure that whoever gets this Viagra has stories that they can never tell to anyone after they get home. And now you can see it is the correct Viagra. Your patient can go, and they never have to tell anyone what happens after they take it. And that is our demo. And now I'm going to have it go back to the slides and hand it to Jay. As you can see from the demo, the link square shines a light on a pill, and it collects Click. the response data. It collects the response data of, to the various wavelengths. This is the wavelength you see when it collects the response data. We call it spectrum, spectral fingerprint. Like all the human has a fingerprint that identify ourselves. Once LinkSquare obtained the spectral fingerprint, it goes to the uh, database that we create. Using our own in-house machine learning algorithm, it tried to find a match. Once it finds a match, we can identify whether this pill is or something, where it's correct or wrong. Of course, spectroscopy exists before, 
but the price of spectroscopy was really expensive. Sometimes it can go over thirty or forty thousand dollars. And of course, the size of the spectrum is really, really big. We reduce the size and price of the spectroscopy so that you can have easy access to the spectroscopy and use the spectroscopy to find whether this medication is right or wrong. Link Scare version one is ready by this quarter, one, 2017. To distribute this uh, Link Scare one, we're working with retail pharmacy, hospital, and take, take uh, care homes. You can also use for the counterfeit drug detection. We're going to sell this unit around $250, and we're going to charge a little bit of fee to create the custom reference database. A peek into the future, Stradio is also working on new version of Link 22, which can also have a twice more spectrum that you just saw, and it will also help you to analyze the component in two th by 2018. But today, we are very excited to announce that Linkscare 1 for medication verification will be ready by this quarter. If you have any question, please visit linkscare.io, where please come to visit our booth at CES. Thank you very much for your time. Judges, who wants to start us off? Is it a clar clarifying question about where the product, or excuse me, where the problem happens. So is it the, the, the pharmacist has got the big jar of pills, are they just taking from the wrong jar at that point and they need to be te tested yeah. downstream? So there are lots of ways that it could go wrong behind the pharmacy counter. Uh, one of the biggest problems is the proliferation of look-alike, sound-alike drugs. So you have your Flonase, your Flomax, your Floxacin, and a lot of times when a pharmacy is trying to fill a prescription, they're doing about 25 in one hour. So they're pressed for time and there's a chance they could grab the wrong bottle. And so this is where you see a lot of the problems. And in addition, a lot of times, it's, it's just a requirement of certain insurance premiums that they have an extra verification step. But if they're pressed for time, why are they going to use this? Uh, so the verify? problem is that right now, you have to have a licensed pharmacist come and visually verify it. So this licensed pharmacist is paid a lot of money, and their job should be to work with patients. So you want a system where your pharmacy technician can verify it themselves instead of having to wait and call over the licensed pharmacist every time that they have to have the pills go out. So this market, I mean, uh, uh, inaccurate prescriptions is, is one that has been focused on because it is a, it both expensive and it has a huge human component. But again, I'm going to come back to the speed element of it. I mean, what, what we find are pharmacies are consolidating. They're trying to remove more prescriptions per hour through each, each individual pharmacy, and that amount of time that you were, you know, you were doing the analysis, if it, e even if it is 100% accurate, it, how do you look at speed over time in helping that? And, and I guess maybe following into that question, is the pharmacist or the pharmacist's assistant the right person to do it, or is it farther upstream in terms of verifying that you know, what went into the, in, into the bowl is the right bowl? It, where is it in the process where this adds maximum value? Sure. So right now, uh, the people that have reached out to us about this product, their idea is for now to have it initially put into the hands of the pharmacy technician. For them right now, that's the step that they're trying to take. But they have discussed that in the future, they may want to try to incorporate a technology like this further upstream uh, inside the pill bottle or something like that. But, you know, that's something that would be in the future. I mean, for 200 bucks, I think consumers would buy this, right? Um, you know, we at, in our medicine chest have a, you know, a, a miscellaneous <laughs> bottle, right? And so yeah, I think for $200, you, you, you know, you have an interesting uh, business there. Thank you. It, when the buying decision, is it driven by the value in reducing mistakes? Or is it driven by the ability to maybe not hire that license pharmacist and, and the cost savings associated with that. The first one, it helps pharmacists to verify again, even though she, he or she knows what that is. So it's the, the tool that can verify whether this pill is what you think, something like that. Yeah. We're not trying to replace any pharmacist at all. And I, I sorry, I, I imagine that there are problems uh, that are more severe with certain types of drugs, right? Mm -hmm. Mistakes are not all created equal. Does the, does the, the spectrum that you're addressing, does it cover some of the more, how, how should we think about how, how complete a solution it is in terms of coverage? So we tested about 65 pills. We can differentiate up to 65 without a problem. But we know there are some pills we cannot 100% differentiate it. So that's why we a little bit show about Link Square 2. With Link Square 2, we can maybe 99.9% .9 differentiate all the pills. But with Link Square 1, you can probably differentiate up to maybe 75% uh, of pills that 
humans care about. I mean, are you working with drug manufacturers now in terms of getting those unique sort of spectral signatures, or are you generating them and saying, hey, I have something unique going on that mm -hmm. I may know something that across the industry, the industry yeah, itself the doesn't one. know? So what happens actually is that a lot of times the people that are interested in using this solution, they might come to us and they'll say, you know, we have a certain number of pills that make up the bulk of what we distribute here through our pharmacy, and we want a database for those specific pills. So we'll work with them to figure out which pills would be of greatest value for them. And if there's one that we know might not work out with our system, we'd of course tell them that because we want to save lives and not kill people with faulty medications. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal of Stratio. <laughs> it's in the mission statement. That's good. Mission Found statement. In and from a regulatory perspective, obviously you're taking a look at, you know, regulated material itself. How, sure. how much regulatory, uh, F, like 5, 510, yeah. do you have to go through yourself? So the way that it works in the United States is that there are uh, state level boards of pharmacy uh, and they each have their own individual ways that they want verification to be done. This also extends to insurance companies. Certain insurance companies want certain things to happen for certain kinds of premiums. So really what happens is that the people that we're working with tell us what their requirements are and what their state, of, state board would want to see. Uh, and because there are 50 states, uh, we are working through that process. And this is a new technology that hasn't been seen in retail pharmacies before. So we understand that there will be a little bit of regulatory work along the way. A business model wise, maybe you mentioned it. There's 250, and then is there an ongoing subscription to increase the database, maintain the database? Yep. yep. So we, we got a chart for the uh, custom reference database. We, we, we're willing to give up to like 10 free database, but if you want to add more, we're going to charge for each database you want to add on. Yeah, so it's a fee for setting up the database, uh, which is something that we're specialized in as a team. And then also, if they want to add pills in the future or if they have a different batch that they want to incorporate, then we'll work with them to do that as well. All right, one last round of applause for Stratio. As far as I know, the first start to bring Viagra onto the battlefield stage, so <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, all, right, thank you. all right, well, we're going to. <laughs> We're going to bring our judges backstage in just a second so they can deliberate. Um, before we do, let's just, like, real quick, like, what, what did you think? I, I think one thing that was interesting is even though these three companies were in different spaces, for sure, there was some common themes around compliance and the completeness of solution and kind of the ease of use or speed. And maybe that's just one of these things that's anytime a consumer is involved, all these things are important, but they're all dealing with some of these same challenges. I think it's interesting, uh, as, as you see a little bit of a swing, we, we, we were talking about this earlier, you know, consumer solutions versus enterprise and other things. Uh, I, I, you, I think these uh, two of these companies that we saw, I think all three are really targeting really interesting and, and widespread problems. But uh, as you focus more on enterprise companies, one of the things you always have to think about is their ability to enter a much more complex ecosystem, right? We were talking about insurers, pharmacies, pharmacists, the, the state regulatory bodies, all of those things interacting with these companies, it's an interesting thing, like how do you build a company to navigate through that? Um, again, technology doesn't necessarily drive you all the way through to success. I really like the fact that a lot of them had a B2B and a B2C angle. Uh, I think that especially you know, in physical product, it's good to uh, have various channels percolating. All right, and that is the end of the first block of the Startup Battlefield. Give it up one more time for our awesome judges who have been great sports. Uh, we're bringing back the Hardware Battlefield at 2 p.m. Come back for that.